Hello, welcome or welcome back to the last episode, the last video in this series, Getting Better Day by Day. I invite you to join and we will start in sitting cross-legged. So please come to sit cross-legged with one leg in front of the other, first question. Which leg did you put in front? And we will explore this lesson together. And the first movement we are going to explore is the movement we have been doing a lot in this series. Start to lower your head. Let your head sink forwards and down. And then bring it up again, come up again, and maybe a little bit further backwards as well. So that will be our movement. We have been doing this in supine, lying on the back and prone, lying on the belly. We have been rolling, we have been working with our arms, with our eyes. And now just this very simple movement, see, observe what you feel if you round your back, if you lengthen your spine backwards, when you lower your head, if you pull in your belly, if you have a movement in your pelvis backwards, when you lower your head downwards, and when you come up, maybe you can feel your back working. Your back needs to shorten <laughs> the area of your shoulder blades need to be pulled downwards towards your sit bones in the back which then will allow your head to lift and rise. So that's the movement we are going to work with. And the question to observe apart from shortening the front side and shortening the back side or lengthening it, the question is do you deviate from the midline? Do you always stay a little bit more to the left or to the right? Or is your spine always bent a little bit more to the left or to the right? Or just at the end of the movement? Is it when your head is down low that it makes a little swing to the left or to the right? Or when your head is up? <laughs> Maybe it's not up in the center, but it might go a little bit to the right or to the left. Observe what is happening. Or maybe it's not even just your head or your spine that's deviating. Maybe it's just your eyes that go into some other direction suddenly or habitually. And observe when this is happening. To make it a bit more easy to feel that, Come into a side sitting position with your left leg in front of you and your right leg folded behind you. Lean on your left hand and continue with the same movement. So you're just leaning a little bit to the left and see how it is to lean to the left with this movement of lowering your head, shortening your front side, lengthening your back, or lifting your head, shortening your back side. Giving space to breathe in the front side. You might even lean on your left elbow instead, so you're even more slanted to the left, a strong leeway, leanway, leaning, leaning strongly to the left. Or you might do the same thing to the other side to switch over your legs and lean on your right hand or your right elbow. Or lean just on one arm, stay cross-legged and lean on your left arm or lean on your right arm. Play with this a little bit 
until you come back to sitting cross-legged but take your time in leaning to the left and to the right a minute or two with the same movement just to make you more aware of when you deviate from what we consider to be the midline or maybe the midline will calibrate adjust configure itself a bit more during the lesson maybe we will come to our center <laughs> A bit more by experimenting and exploring. Now let's continue to another position, another orientation towards gravity. So lean on both hands a little bit behind you and continue with the same movement of lifting your head, contracting your back, bringing your shoulders together, shortening the backside in order to be able to or support the lifting of the head and then lowering the head again down down and see how you fold pull in your belly maybe roll your pelvis and maybe now you can feel the crossing of your legs can make a difference it does make a difference if you have the right leg or the left leg in front explore this a bit more so extend your left leg stand your right foot and lean on your left hand behind you so your left leg is long your right foot is standing you're leaning on your left hand and continue with the same movement of lowering your head and allowing your head to rise to lift by supporting it with the back so now this is suddenly very asymmetrical again so there's movement possibility more on the left side where the left leg is long and you're more restricted probably on the right side where your right foot is standing and influencing the or obstructing the movements of your pelvis more than on your left side where your leg is long can you feel that or you can play with bending your left leg more and always continue with the movement of lowering the head and lifting the head or you extend your left leg and see how the leg position affects influences obstructs or supports the lifting and lowering because one side is free and the other side is more constrained in a asymmetrical position like this or move over to lean more on your right hand and stand your left foot have your right leg long so now play with these variations one leg long and the other one standing so it's the left foot standing and the right hand standing or the right foot standing and the left hand standing always diagonal
or we come home in a more symmetrical position, lean on both hands behind you and have both legs long. And feel when you lift your head and lower your head, how easy it is to perceive uh, imaginary midline and to observe whether or not you by yourself your structure deviate and when at the end or beginning of the movement or right in the middle if you go in a curve up and down you could do that deliberately or you try to stay more and more in the midline And that's not to say the midline is the ideal pathway. We want to know more. We want to see more. We want to feel more. Experiment. And while we move, it changes us. It improves us. Let's make this a little bit stronger for the shoulders so lean backwards onto your elbows with your legs long and here on the elbows bring your head backwards which means to extend to lift your head what is lifting the head is now the different direction. Lifting the head means deflection forwards and lowering the head suddenly is the other direction, downwards, backwards. How can you participate with your whole spine when you lift your head to look towards your feet, you contract your abdomen, a strong shortening of the front side then it's easy and when you go backwards you lengthen your front side you let that happen and shorten the back side and how is that with your legs when you play with your legs can you feel that this pulls you more to one side or the other and how do you have to place your legs to find the symmetrical middle and if you haven't yet fallen downwards, backwards, and do that, I invite you, take a rest, <laughs> finally, uh, to lie on your back and here also observe, do you rest more to the left or to the right or maybe it's not that important anymore, maybe you can rest in a curve. And it's just as comfortable as in the exact middle. Just be aware, know where you are, at what point, when. And then flip over, <laughs> do the burger, <laughs> on your front side, on your elbows. And here in this position, let's take advantage of this position by exploring how is it to lower your head and lift your head. When you're propped up on your elbows, lying prone, with your belly facing towards the floor. And do it slowly enough so that you can hang your head and then contract your back and the contraction of the back. So the back is connected to the neck and then lifts the head or the other way you can lower your head and shorten your front side. Yes, prove a point. Let's prove a point. 
lean on your hands more as much as you can without squeezing your back into oblivion <laughs> and lower your head and when you lower your head shorten your front side so make an effort to shorten your front side don't just hang your head but shorten your front side round your back And then take a take a rest again. So we are learning to actively contract, to work with the torso to support the movements of the neck. And when you're lying on your back, so rest on your back and feel Feel the area in between your shoulder blades or a little bit upwards and press, try to press that area stronger against the floor. So you press your shoulder area down towards the floor and then pull it down towards your pelvis. So you press your shoulders against the floor and then pull them, pull them so that's an effort in your back. It's not an arching of your lower back, it's not an arching of your mid back, but you push your shoulders against the floor and drag them down towards the pelvis. So you have a contraction with all of your back, all your back muscles. Or the other way around, you think of your, of your chest, your chest shortening, shortening, the front side, the upper part of your chest, shortening so you look towards your feet. Yes, okay, and then come up again. <laughs> Pretty activating. Let's try, let's try a few more positions. For example, a little bit higher on your knees and hands how is it on your knees and hands to lower your head but not just let the head hang dangle down but to contract your front side or to contract your back side to lift your head and it's not just the lower back that contracts and squeezes your discs in the lower back but it's the upper back and the area between the shoulder blades everything works in harmony proportionally we could ask for symmetry by leaning against one elbow and standing on one hand to make a asymmetrical situation and then move back to a more symmetrical and see if we are on the midline or next to the midline. You can observe where you look with your eyes or have your eyes closed. And then Come to stand on your knees. Let's do this as well. On the knees with your hands dangling down or your hands on your hips so you can feel your hips and then in this position lower your head. If you like you can come almost to sit down but our intention is to contract the front side and not just the belly, but the whole front side to lower the head, to lower the head, and then to lift the head. You can exaggerate that movement all the way you like, or <laughs> do just a little bit. The finesse, the finer, the finer 
feeling sensations when you do it just a little bit, just the beginning of the movement. Or if you want to explore a more asymmetric situation again, bring your left foot to stand and you're on your right knee and then lean forward, see? Now you're leaning on the right knee if you're in this position. So the right knee is loaded, the right side is loaded, the left side is free. That creates a strong asymmetry. If you exaggerate, you need to move your left leg out of the way so you can bend down. <laughs> or the, on the other side and maybe just a little bit. Or if you would like to perform in front of a crowd someday, you can put your head <laughs> under the, the, the arch <laughs> of your legs. So, we'll do one more rest, I guess, a short rest on the back. See how it feels like to rest on the back. We are moving so fast. And place yourself a little bit to the left, into a curve to the left. See how much of a curve can you assume? How much into a curve can you move and still feel comfortable at rest without you feeling that you're constrained or pulled too far to the left? How much can you go to the right? You don't have to be stiff in the middle. You can go a little bit left, a little bit right, a little bit up, backwards, not so much, just the floor. And still feel comfortable. How is it to press your shoulders against the floor to shorten your back or to let go of your back and shorten your front side? Or just take a rest. And then for one last time, <laughs> come up to sit, please. Sit, cross-legged. See how it is to sit cross-legged now. How mobile are your legs now? How easy is it now to change the legs over? or to lengthen one leg or the other. To lean on one hand or the other, to lean in front of you, <laughs> or maybe to lean in between your legs and your pelvis, like you see it kids doing sometimes that are so free to play. How is it to, <laughs> to just sit? How do you perceive your center? How much you sit on your left hip joint and your right hip joint? If one leg is more an obstacle than the other? If you can sit with your left leg in front just as well as with your right leg in front, And then again, lower your head, just to see, feel, observe how it is now, at the end of this lesson, at the end of this series, to lower your head, you round yourself forwards.
how is it to come up, to lift your head, to look up to the sky, being supported by your back. And if you go back and forth, smaller and smaller, where is the point where your head is balanced? I wouldn't say perfectly balanced, but where your head is balanced, carried easily on your spine, where your spine, you feel your spine is mobile. You can move your spine to balance your head. You can move your spine to breathe, to sit, to speak. How is it to be, to be present, embodied? at ease. All right, it was my pleasure <laughs> to lead you through this lesson, through this series. Thank you so much for your support, for making these videos possible. Thank you so much for watching this series and see you in the next one. Oh. And of course, we have to get up and face the world in standing. How is it to be standing upright again? <laughs>